Hey there, welcome back to Miracle Learning Base. My name is Isha and in today's video, we'll look at the features Omraco Workflow has to offer. Omraco Workflow allows the creation of multi-stage approval workflows when writing and publishing content. Let's say you have multiple content authors making changes to your websites and you might want certain groups of people to approve these changes before it's published on the website. This is where Umbraco workflow fits in perfectly. So let's get started. Once you've installed Umbraco workflow, you'll see a workflow dashboard in the content section and a workflow section at the end here. The workflow dashboard displays the task requiring approval from the user, the current user submissions, and stale content if the content reviews feature is enabled. The task requiring my approval table contains the content node with the language variant sent for workflow approval, the type of publish, the date the workflow was requested, and the comment describing the changes. The detail button at the end of the record displays a pending publish workflow overlay with an option to approve, reject, or cancel pending workflow task. You can also go to the node directly from here or get a preview of how the node looks on the front end. In the change description section, you can view the change description and track differences across pending and completed workflows. Next, you can view the group responsible for approving the pending workflow. You can also view the language variant sent for workflow approval and view the workflow activity for the current workflow process. For example, whether it's in approved stage, rejected, resubmitted, pending approval, and so on. Additionally, you can set how many records you want to view on the page. Similarly, my submissions table contains similar information as we've seen above. The stale content table contains information such as the content node, next review date, and the last review date. Moving on, if you look at the content node, you might notice that Umraco Workflow adds a content app called Workflow to all the content nodes where Workflow is enabled. The Workflow content app includes three subsections, Active Workflow, Configuration, and History. The Active Workflow section provides an interface for managing workflows for the current content node. When you initiate a workflow on the current node, you need to add a comment and optionally add attachments or schedule a date to publish the changes requested in the node. You can configure these options in the workflow settings, which I'll go through in a bit. If you have a website with multiple languages, you can submit the variant content in one of these workflows. Just this one, if you wish to submit the current language for workflow approval. In my case, it's English US. Or in variant, in this case, all variants are sent for publishing in a single workflow process using the workflow applied to the default variant. Or multivariant, in this case, each variant is sent into a separate workflow using the workflow configurations set on each language. The configuration section provides an interface for configuring the approval flows and content reviews. Approval flows are available in three types, content approval flow, inherited approval flow, and document type approval flow. A given content node may have all three approval flow types applied but only one will be applied as per the following order of priority. The content approval flow takes priority over the other two workflow types and can be directly set from here on the content node. Here, you can either add or remove approval groups from the workflow, or you can edit an approval group settings, roles, or members. If you wish to review the current responsibilities of an approval group, you can do so from the Roles tab. I'll cover this a little later. You can track 
and drop to reorder these groups and apply the approval flow either for publish and unpublish workflow or for publish workflow only. The document type approval flow takes second priority and is set in the workflow settings section. This approval flow will apply to all content nodes of the selected document type unless the node has a content approval flow set. This feature requires a license. And finally, the inherited approval flow. If a node has no content approval flow set, nor a flow applied to its document type, Umbraco workflow will traverse the content tree until it finds a node with a content approval flow and will use that flow for the current change. The content reviews display the approval group inherited for the current content item set in the content review setting tab in the workflow section. Moving on, the history section displays an audit trail of the workflow activity for the current node. It's quite similar to the table we saw earlier. You can filter the records based on the information from the table and adjust the total number of records displayed on a page. If we go back to the content tab, you'll notice a content review banner here. I'll go through this a little later. The other thing to notice here is the publish button. The publish button is replaced with the request publish button. There's also an option to request unpublish of the node as well. Only if the user has permission to update the node, they'll be able to initiate a workflow process on that node. Moving on, let's go to the workflow section. The workflow dashboard is called the administrator dashboard and is the default view in the workflow section. It displays a chart of recent workflow, content review activity, and licensing information if you've purchased one. You can also set the number of days you wish to view the workflow activity chart for. If you click on the numbers here, it takes you to the history section. Next, we have the active workflow section, which displays all the content nodes in an active workflow. As an administrator, you can get an overview of everything. Workflow administrators, basically those users with access to the workflow section, can access workflows assigned to a different group and action a workflow in absence of an approval group. Next, we'll look at approval groups. Here, you can create or edit an approval group. The settings tab consists of an email. Here, you can provide a generic group email address to which the workflow notifications will be sent. You can select a language variant for the email if it's a multilingual website. And enable offline approval if you want to allow the users of this group to approve changes without logging into the back office. This feature requires a paid license and is useful where the approval group member is a single user who does not use Umbraco. Below, you can find the workflow activity of the group. The Roles tab provides an overview of the current workflow roles for the group. You can set these roles in the Settings section here. Next, in the Members tab, you can add users to the approval group to determine which member is responsible for approving the content changes. Group members can also inherit group membership from an existing user group. The History tab provides an overview of the workflow approvals for the current group. Next is the Content Reviews section. The Content Reviews Overview dashboard displays a table containing the page name with the language variant, next review due date, last review date, review period in days, and the review group. Selecting a content node 
takes you to the content node in the content section where you can see the content review banner. The content review banner is displayed only when the node has passed its review date. The review banner is displayed only to users assigned as reviewers for the node. Clicking on Mark as Reviewed allows the review group member to mark the content as reviewed. Optionally, the review group member can also set the next review date on the content node. Let's go back to the content review section and go to the settings tab. The settings tab consists of these features. Enable content reviews. This is where you enable this feature. You can enable this setting if you wish to remind users to review their content. By default, this option is disabled. Enable send notifications to send email notifications to approval groups when content requires review. You can enable the setting to reset the review date when content is saved. Review period in days, the default number of days between content reviews. And the reminder threshold determines how many days prior to the review date the workflow should notify editors of required reviews. By default, the number of days is set to 1. You can configure content reviews for individual content nodes or for all nodes of a given document type. For both content item and document type reviews, the following settings are available. You can select the language for which content review must be enabled. Exclude from review. You can enable the setting to ignore the specific content node or all content nodes of this document type when determining nodes to review. Next, the review period in days between required reviews and the group responsible for reviewing the content node. The review group can contain more than one group. Next is the history section and we've already touched upon this earlier. And finally, moving on to the settings section. When working with Umbraco workflow, you can handle the workflow settings directly in the back office from here. The flow type determines the approval flow progress. These options manage how the change author is included in the workflow. If you select explicit, all steps of the workflow will be completed and all users will be notified of the task, including the change author. If you select implicit, it auto approves the steps where the change author is a member of the approving group. And if you select exclude, it's very similar to explicit. All these steps will be completed, but it excludes the change author from any notifications. If you set lock active content to true, it locks the content node when it's pending workflow approval so that the change author cannot make any modifications to the content until the workflow is approved. Allow attachments. You can enable this if you would like change authors to provide an attachment, such as a supporting document or reference to a media item when initiating a workflow. This feature is useful when a workflow requires supporting documentation. Allow scheduling. You can enable the setting to select a scheduled date when initiating a workflow. Use workflow for unpublish. Set this to true if you want unpublished actions to go through a workflow approval. Extend permissions. Here, you can determine if Umraco workflow should extend or replace the user's save and publish permissions. By default, the behavior is to replace the user's permissions. In new node approval flow, you can determine if new nodes must use a workflow for initial publishing. Here, you can add approval groups and edit their roles and membership to suit the workflow settings. 
In document type approval flows, you can configure default workflows that should be applied to all content nodes of the selected document type. This feature requires a license. In exclude nodes, if you select a node and its descendants, they will be excluded from the workflow process and will be published as per the configured Umbraco user permissions. This feature also requires a license. Finally, let's go through the Notifications tab. The Notifications tab provides access to these settings. If you wish to send email notifications to approval groups, you can enable it here. Here, you can provide a sender address for email notifications. This is a mandatory field. You can set a delay in days for sending reminder emails to approval groups for outstanding workflow processes. Set to zero to disable reminder emails. In the edit site URL field, provide the URL for the editing environment. This is a mandatory field. In the site URL field, provide the URL for the public website. This is also a mandatory field. In the email templates, you can configure which users receive emails for which workflow actions and modify the templates for those emails. You can send an email to all members of all groups in all workflow stages, admin user, change author who initiated the workflow, or members of the group assigned to the current task. Below, you can see the email template. And that's pretty much an overview of workflow. So in this video, we've looked at the workflow user dashboard in the content section, workflow content app that's added to content notes in the content section, and the workflow section consisting of the admin dashboard, active workflows admin view, approval groups, content reviews, workflow history, and the settings section. I hope you're quite excited to try out Umbraco workflow. Watch out the space for more videos on workflow. Until then, take care and stay safe.